Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video of uh, Raman Spectroscopy and in this video we are going to have a quick recap of the concept because we have not till yet uh, you know discussed the whole concept of Stokes and anti-Stokes and let's move uh, let's move this Raman Spectroscopy a little forward right so till now what we had discussed was and there was a very Im interesting doubt that had been asked that what are these energy levels that I've writ written down as 0 1 2 3 so these can be vibrational also these can be rotational energy levels also and they can be both vibrational and rotational right it depends on what kind of Raman Spectroscopy you are dealing so you might have heard of pure rotational uh, Raman Spectroscopy pure vibrational uh, Raman Spectroscopy and rotational vibration Raman spectroscopy so it all depends on these energy levels if these are rotational energy levels then it's called pure rotational uh, Raman spectroscopy if these are vibration energy levels it's called pure vibrational uh, Raman spectroscopy and if there's you know mix mixture of both uh, vibration and rotational because in between two vibration energy levels there are many number of uh, rotational energy levels also so then it's called rota vibrational you know rota by whatever uh, vibro rotational uh, Raman spectroscopy right so we are going to discuss that as well but before that let's just discuss Raman spectroscopy in detail so let's say these are the vibration energy levels all right let's assume these, these are the vibration energy levels so what did we study for Rayleigh scattering or the elastic scattering was that if we have some frequency h mu and with that frequency we uh, the molecule interacts with that frequency it does not absorb that frequency it merely scatters that frequency so what happens is it goes the the photon gets the energy from the ground state energy level it gets excited to some virtual state some virtual state it is not a real energy level it's a virtual state which is very short-lived and then if it returns back to the same energy level that means it emits the same photons h mu then it's said to be Rayleigh scattering or elastic scattering that means the photo the energy that we transfer the same energy is emitted right or the same energy is scattered by the for the same uh, energy of the scattered photon we obtain then it's said to be Rayleigh scattering if the incident photon and the scattered photon are not of the same energy so then it's called inelastic scattering and there are two cases okay one gives rise to Stokes line and one gives rise to anti Stokes line so what happens in Stokes is we have let's say a frequency a photon which uh, which interacts with the molecule from the ground state it gets excited to the virtual state but it comes back to the first excited state instead of returning to the ground state like that happened in Rayleigh scattering it is returning to the first excited state right so that means if, if we are supplying an energy or if the photon has energy of h mu the photon that will be emitted will have a energy less than that because this energy from virtual state to the ground state is more and the energy from the virtual state to the first excited state is less so there will be some lesser energy of the photon so if the photon that is emitted or is, is scattered will have lesser energy I am sorry I am saying emitted again and again it should be scattered so the scattered photon is going to have less energy and then this scattered photon give, gives rise to Stokes line whereas if let's say a molecule is in the first excited state it goes to the virtual state comes back to the ground state now the energy of this photon from the uh, that was supplied to this molecule it got excited from first excited state to the virtual state whereas w once it returned it returned to the ground state so this energy of the scattered photon is greater because compared to the energy between first excited state and the virtual state and if you compare the energy of virtual state and the ground state this is more so the energy of the scattered photon is going to be more than what initially was given right so that means this will give rise to anti Stokes line okay so this is the uh, diagram you generally see uh, this is your Rayleigh scattering uh, which I represent by wave number right so on the x axis we have the wave number and on the y axis we have the intensity so if you see the Rayleigh scattering has is the most in intense followed by Stokes line which is towards the left so always remember the Stokes line will be towards the left and the anti Stokes will be towards the right when we are representing in terms of wave number right so you should be careful what is being represented on the x axis I'll discuss what I mean by that 
so why is um, first of all let's discuss the intensity right I have, I have written down over here intensity so what exactly why is that strokes line have a higher intensity than anti strokes line and why is really scattering high, is the high is the most intense so this is the uh, i mean uh, if conceptually speaking this is the most elastic scattering is the most uh, you know a favorable scattering that can take place and that's why really scattering is very very intense because if a molecule gets excited from the ground state to virtual state and it it gets scattered it will return back to the ground state that is the most probabilistic thing that can happen and that is why Rayleigh scattering is the most intense but if we compare strokes and anti-strokes at room temperature okay i'm talking about room temperature so at room temperature what happens is um from the ground state it gets excited to the virtual state and then it returns to the first excited state so the number of atoms or the number of molecules in the ground state at room temperature is going to be much more so that is why stokes line is intense whereas if you see in anti stokes where is the excitation taking place from for the molecules from first excited state they are returning to the ground state so the number of molecules in first excited state at room temperature is obviously going to be less than the number of molecules in ground state at room temperature and the intensity depends on the number of molecules that are getting excited to the virtual state and then getting scattered so since there are more molecules in the ground state at room temperature as compared to the um, excited state that is why stokes line are much more intense in fact they are 100 times more intense than anti stokes line and that is why you need even a better spectro uh, raman spectrometer for measuring the or for you know uh, resolving the anti stokes line okay so this is the big reason of the intensity and that is why i think there was a question in tifr also this year that is in 2017 gs 2018 in the paper where they had said that uh, you know where will you i think opt obtain anti stokes line or something like that at kanyakumari or at mount Everest or something like that the question was there so Kanyakumari is hot so there are more chances that you will get a better anti strokes line at Kanyakumari rather than Mount Everest because at Mount, Tem Mount Everest temperature is lower so there will be more molecules in the ground state whereas in Kanyakumari it's a it's it's a top it's hot right compared to Mount Everest so there will be more number of molecules in uh, excited state right so there will be more chances that you'll get an intense anti strokes line at Kanyakumari as compared to Mount Everest all right now uh, why is it towards the left and why is it towards the right this is also a very important thing that we need to understand okay and the reason for that is let's say we have energy you know all of you know energy is equal to h mu mu is the frequency so this can be written as hc by lambda right and what is wave number wave number is basically inverse of lambda inverse of uh, wavelength right so 1 by lambda is equal to equal to the wave number so we can write this as hc and v v and bar this is the description or this is the uh, um, this is how you rep represent wave number hc v bar uh, bar over the v right now out of this energy that means is directly proportional to wave number because c is constant that is speed of light and h is planck's constant so both of them are constant so the energy is directly proportional to a wave number right now the in Rayleigh scattering the energy of the incident photon and the energy of the scattered photon both are same right in Rayleigh scattering the energy of incident photon and the energy of scattered photon both are same so this E naught is basically energy of you can say Rayleigh photon energy of the Rayleigh photon or the energy of the incident photon it means the same thing but we'll take it to be the energy of Rayleigh photon okay the energy of the Rayleigh photon or the scattered photon in, the, in, in terms of Rayleigh scattering so that energy is going to be greater than the energy in, in case of Stokes line because in Stokes line we are having minus delta E so from the original energy or from the Rayleigh energy we are subtracting some value of energy to get your um, sorry E uh, we are subtracting some energy right we are subtracting some not delta e, we are subtracting some kind of energy so that means the energy of the stokes line is going to be less okay so because the energy of the stokes line is going to be less uh, the wave number is also going to be less as compared to the Rayleigh wave number the Rayleigh wave number is v naught and the scatter and the stokes line wave number is uh, bs so that is going to be less but if we compare the anti stokes in anti stokes we are having h mu plus delta e that means to the Rayleigh photon we are adding or to the incident photon we are adding some energy so that energy is going to be greater so e of anti stokes sorry e of anti stokes um e of anti stokes is going to be greater than e naught or the Rayleigh energy of the Rayleigh photon that means the wave number of the anti stokes photon is going to be uh, greater than the wave number of the 
original photon or the Rayleigh photon. So that is why VA is coming on the right hand side. If we compare, if we are comparing the wave number, the wave number of anti-Stokes is going to be greater. And then we have V0 in between. And then we have Stokes on the left side. Now this is a comparative thing, okay? Where we take V0 as the reference wave number. So what do I mean by that is, let's say we are having um, 460 centimeter inverse, 470 and 480 where 480, 470 centimeter inverse, 470 centimeter inverse is the Rayleigh photon, is the wave number of the Rayleigh photon. So that means 460 will be the, uh, uh, will be the wave number for Stokes photon and 480 will be the uh, wave number of anti-Stokes photon, right? So that means we'll take this to be zero, okay? We'll take this to be zero and we'll write over here 10 centimeter inverse and we'll write over here minus 10 centimeter inverse okay so this is in reference so we don't write 470 uh, you know we don't write 470 480 490 500 we just show minus or plus so that is why wave number if you see in the uh, raman raman uh, spectrometer you will see that minus 10 minus 20 minus 30 like that why is that because so that means in the raman spectrometer you see negative and positive signs so positive signs represent your stokes anti stokes line and the negative signs represent stokes line okay so you won't see as 460 470 480 470 is the relay scatter the wave number of the relay photon so that is taken as reference and if you get at 480 then it will be shown as 10 centimeter inverse and if you get at 460 that will be shown as minus 10 centimeter inverse so this is very important for you to understand but over here i have written wave number instead of wave number if i write wavelength over here now this is some kind of conceptual questions that can be framed like that instead of wave number if i write over here wavelength then this graph will invert then on the left side we'll have anti-stokes and on the right side we'll have stokes why because wave number wave number v bar is proportional to one by lambda so that means the one with the higher wavelength will have a lower uh, wave uh, the one with the higher wave number will have a lower wavelength right the one with a higher wave number will have a lower wavelength. So anti-Stokes has a higher wave number but a lower wavelength. So instead if it, over here, if instead of wave number, if I write wavelength, the graph will invert. Invert as in the Rayleigh scattering will remain the same but now we'll get anti-Stokes towards the left and Stokes towards the right. And this is a very, very important thing to understand, right? So do not get confused over here. This is a very important thing. Now what? or else we need to discuss is your scattering efficiency. So what exactly is scattering efficiency? So scattering efficiency is basically a, a particle, how efficiently it can scatter a particular wavelength. Okay. And that is given by one upon lambda to the power four. Scattering efficiency is given by one upon lambda to the power four. That means that lower the wavelength, lower the wavelength. Okay. Okay. Don't con get confused between wave number and wavelength, lower the wavelength better will be the scattering efficiency right lower the wavelength better will be the scattering efficiency that means if i use uv region in uv if i compare uv visible and ir uv has the lowest wavelength okay uv will have the lowest wavelength and if it has lowest wavelength that will that means there will there will be better scattering in uv region as compared to visible and ir okay so mostly we'll try to do all the um, all, mostly all Raman spectrometers will try and focus on UV region to get a better scattering efficiency and to get a better Raman spect uh, spectra, right? But what happens is in UV region, you can also have fluorescence, okay? So instead of it going to a virtual state, it might go to a, another excited electronic state, okay? So between different energy levels, we also have some, we have electronic levels also, right? E0 and E1. So it can also be there that if you're using in UV region, the mo molecule might fluoresce. So from zero, it might go to the first excited state and it could show fluorescence and phosphor phosphorescence. And that in fact interferes with our uh, Raman spectra. So we do not want that as well. So we have to keep a balance of the wave wavelength so that we don't obtain fluorescence in the molecule as well. So this is an important thing that we need to consider. What is the other important, uh, you know, uh, applications of this scattering efficiency? Well, uh, you know, blue light and red light, if you compare blue light and red light, red light has a higher wavelength and blue light has comparatively lower wavelength. All right. So what happens is N2 and O2 are there in the atmosphere. Predominantly, we have oxygen and nitrogen in the atmosphere and these are very small in size. So because of the scattering efficiency, they are easily able to scatter the blue light, which is of lower wavelength and they are not able to scatter the red light because of which what happens is you see the sky as blue. 
because the small molecules cannot scatter the red light efficiently because of this formula 1 upon lambda to the power 4 but if you compare clouds clouds have very large water droplets okay they are very large in size so what happens is water droplets as compared to uh, your oxygen nitrogen they are quite large in size and they are able to scatter almost all the light and that is why you see clouds as white in color but you see the sky as blue in color because oxygen and nitrogen because of this formula of scattering efficiency are only able to scatter blue light with some efficiency they are not able to scatter red light with as much efficiency and that is why you see the sky as blue in color right so i hope you found this video useful and thank you so much for watching do give me your feedback and thank you